Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, this is a 30 minute panel discussion on the trials and triumphs of getting an NFT project off the ground. So I'll ask a few questions to the panelists and then I'll open up the floor to any questions. So get those questions going now. Uh, I'm your moderator and host, Rosie Perper. I'm the managing editor at Hypebeast and also of the soon to be launched Web3 platform, Hypemoon. Check us out on Twitter. Uh, today's discussion is called Inside the NFT Studio, the good, bad, and ugly of dropping dope NFTs. I'm joined today by four awesome panelists inside the Web3 space, and their names, or better known digital identities, are behind several well-known NFT projects, including Cryptodes and Subducks. While all of the talent joining me on stage come from diverse backgrounds, they all share a common passion for creating community in Web3 and know all about dropping dope NFTs. So to start things off, I'd like to pass the mic. Well, you guys have your own mic, so uh, you guys can answer the questions on who you guys are and the projects that you're working on. And if you could answer this question for me, what does your PFP or avatar look like and why did you choose that to represent you? Cool, yo, what's up everybody? Uh, Frankie Nines with Sub Ducks. Uh, let's see, my PFP right now, I have the pizza duck. It's a pizza duck. I mean, I love ducks and I like pizza, so. Fair that's reason. The, that's my PFP. It, it's crazy, because I actually minted that one um, when the project dropped, so it's like my, it's never leaving me. <laughs> All right, let's, does this work through the mask? Can you hear me? Go under. Under? Okay, is this better? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Hey, I'm Dinfo one of the co-creators of Cryptodes. Um, I also am building a startup called Saga, focusing on interactive storytelling NFTs. And uh, how, what is my PFP? I guess maybe this is a representation of what it might be. <laughs> is that uh, what you look like underneath? <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, it sort of <laughs> kind of defeats the purpose if I looked exactly like this, right? <laughs> I'm trying to stay non here. Um, but yeah, that's a little about me. I'll pass it on. Hey, it's uh, Will here, the founder of The Littles, and uh, Littles is inspired by my little daughter. She's two and a half. She goes out, feels like she can conquer the world, but she's just a little, she, yeah, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, the way she interacts with the world, super pure, raw, authentic, sometimes magical. <coughs> and that's exactly how I feel when I interact with NFTs. So that's what I want to be able to bring back to other people that holds our NFT. Um, our PFP are little cute pixelated bears. Uh, only reason is because she loves bears. So that's that. Cool. Uh, I'm Sutu. Uh, I'm an Australian artist and co-founder of iJack, which is an augmented reality app and platform. And um, I'm the creator of Neons, which is the first uh, 10K drop of, on the Tezos platform. And I uh, chose that for environmental reasons. and. Uh, of more equal access because the gas fees are like 0.1 cents rather than 140 bucks or whatever. Um, and yeah, what I'm trying to build with our Neons project is an augmented reality metaverse. So when you uh, sync your crypto wallet to my augmented reality app, you'll be able to activate your PFP on your face uh, as an AR face builder, which um, is showing at Super Chief Gallery this week. And, um, and you can also uh, put your neons like a neon sign out in the world and have it floating around out in the in the real world So that's what I'm up to Awesome, thank you guys for being up here uh, So I know a few of you are already founders of successful NFT projects or, or most of you all of you uh, But let's go back to the beginning. How did you guys come up with the concepts for your projects? And what steps did you take to finally get them off the ground? Cool um, so I've been in the NFT space since 2018. I got into blockchain in 2017. I was previously at Dapper Labs, um, which is everybody knows CryptoKitty is probably one of the most epic projects that was created in the space. Um, so I've been an artist in the space as well, like minting on known origin and super rare and Back in about 2018, an app on the iPhone came out, it was called Additional. And it was like a kind of, you could take photos from your camera roll and mint them as NFTs. And I was at NFT 
I think it was NFT NYC or it was it was something in New York. But I was on on my iPad and I was doodling and I started drawing this like little duck, and I was like, "Yo, cool duck says sup," and it was like my little like just this, like little comic that I was making and I was minting it on additional. Re, like fast forward after you know come uh, jumping across a couple projects I was at NFT 42 I was working I worked on V friends and about the time when I when I got into NFT 42 Jimmy had already like he minted a bunch of apes like he had like crazy ape collection and I already knew the whole workflow and process of doing generative art because I have a background in gaming and and just digital illustration and uh, I got a DM from who from Strong, who's my now co-founder it was like yo you should bring back sup duck and when he like sent me that message I was like you remember sup duck I was like yo okay let's go um, jammed you know a month and a half of just making art and you know, launched it and then boom it's like, yo, sub ducks. You know, I mean, we dropped what in July last year, so um, yeah, we're still going. This is dope. So that's the story of sub. <laughs> yeah, uh, the crypto story also comes starts way back in 2017, getting inspired by Crypto Kitties. So I got into NFTs when I was like, oh man, this is where a Magic the Gathering would happen if it was created today. Uh, fast forward into 2021. And a bunch of my friends and I were hanging out on the CryptoPunks Discord, and it was getting a little noisy. And so I created a little separate community for us to just hang out ourselves. And we were like, oh, we should do a project together. We're all like spending way too much time doing all this stuff. And we knew this artist, Gremplin, who like, actually, I didn't know he was an artist at first. I thought he was a developer. We were talking in the CryptoPunks Discord, and he'd say, oh, I make these little toads when I'm like uploading something. So I was like, uploading what? Um, and so we, I was like, can I help you make some? I didn't even know he was an artist at that point. And then we rope him in to helping us on this project and uh, spend like three months uh, just making something that we really thought would be like a, a love letter to the Web3 space. You know, we sort of, uh, as someone who's, you know, been around the internet industry for a while, um, we really wanted to espouse the values that we think could make Web3 different than Web2. And so we tried to make it CCO so anyone could do anything with it, just kind of like the way you imagine when you upload a picture on the internet, like anyone can touch this, right? Um, and now we're really deep into also letting people build through us. So we have a community grants program where any builder in the world can apply. Don't, don't even have to have a crypto. And uh, you can kind of get funding to bring your vision to life. And we've seen so many different projects come out of that. And so it was just so uh, such a wild experience to see the community reception off of something that was just like a friend's project, basically. Super cool. So the littles, the littles, inspired by my daughter, as I was sharing with you guys, um, Honestly, it, we got to rewind three months earlier than that because it really started with me and my wife. We started our NFT journey together, and which is really, really cool because we put the kid to sleep and we jump back down on the sofa with our laptops and we just degen all day long. Cool cats, sub ducks, uh, world of women. So we're just like nonstop degening. And from that moment on, we realized that having that inspiration of stemming from our daughter, this feeling, is not just good enough to survive in this marketplace because it was getting a lot crowded. So at that point, we're looking at what was the problem in the marketplace. The marketplace has a really big problem with projects that have their own ecosystem, tokenized ecosystem, and it's always inflationary. And each project owner is trying to figure out different ways to deflate it, having different burn room mechanics and stuff like that. So I realized that this problem existed and there was no solution. And that's when I actually went to pitch Frankie. So much thanks to that. He agreed to be like, hey, you know what? Sure, I'll take a chance in you, little kid. Um, and I approached uh, Cyber Kongs, Cool Cats, and Kaiju Kings, uh, because they're the biggest in terms of having their own ecosystem. And we told them, we can become a deflationary partner for you guys. We'll take your tokens, we'll burn them, and create uh, an ecosystem, an infliction point, to serve that purpose. And that's how we were able to partner up with four, four blue chips right before we even launched. And um, yeah, we launched and it was, uh, people loved it, loved what we stand for, fun, inclusive, and a little bit of nostalgic. So that's a little bit about how we started the Littles. Um, 
Yeah, I've been a digital artist for about 20 years, and uh, you know, there's never really been a marketplace or economy of support uh, digital art. Very difficult to sell it in the past. So, um, sort of when this whole NFT movement happened, I was very interested um, to look into to it. I started creating um, a lot of my NFTs on the Tesla's blockchain, just doing like hand-drawn, frame-by-frame animations on my iPad. And that got some popularity. I started to uh, build a community around just my artwork. I um, was super inspired by that. Um, and at the same time, you know, for the last 15 years, I've been uh, heavily involved in massive world building projects and community driven uh, art creation projects. Like my company, we create creator tools to allow artists to very easily create augmented reality. And we have like 10,000 artists on that platform. And, um, and then I was starting to think what of the lessons that we learned from world building and community driven kind of um, art projects and how like we could bring the, the whole NFT infrastructure into that. Um, and like previously I worked on projects like the Ready Player One uh, properties and stuff like that, which is like, you know, just incredible feel for your imagination of what the metaverse could look like, that sort of thing. So I was like, well, this is kind of the moment right now we can do this. Um, yeah, NFTs and crypto, uh, biggest strength is actually like the peer-to-peer -peer nature of it. You can share and collect and sell artwork peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, and then, you know, when you're all connected via these wallets, then you can uh, start to uh, use the artwork to unlock experiences. And that's what I've been focusing on lately. So now, um, and, wh and what you will see <laughs> uh, next month is um, our community have been unlocking their uh, Neon's NFTs on their faces and they're, you know, filming themselves wearing these crazy cyberpunk aesthetics. And I deliberately chose the cyberpunk aesthetic because it's kind of, you know, we're shaping the future of the metaverse right now, which is a previously sci-fi concept. But, you know, what better way to represent it than actually get out there looking very sci-fi. So I think, and it's really cool, like, you know, our Discord is, all our community are coming up with these crazy ideas and we're thinking about how to implement them and we're thinking a lot about the interpretability of those uh, NFTs, the original NFTs to unlock the AR experience and now we're building a video game. And if you go into the video game and say your side punk Neon's character has like a VR headset, then you know that allows you to see in the dark or see through walls depending on which headset you got. Or if you've got the gas mask on, then you know you can go through the radioactive zone. But if you don't, you're running at half the speed, this kind of thing. So the traits can also inform gameplay and stuff like that. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks so much. <laughs> Um, great. So uh, I've got another question for you guys. What were some of the unexpected challenges that came up during the creation and minting processes, and how did you guys solve them? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, anytime you're dealing with an art pipeline of thousands of images that are made up of, you know, five, six different images, there's always a like a big QA process. You don't know what's gonna like turn out, right? Especially with generative projects. Um, I actually like, I'm more of a fan of the, the like PFPs or the generative art that has like, where it doesn't make sense. Or like if an eyeball is like in fr like behind an ear, like when stuff like that mints, I'm like, ooh, that's, that's a keeper, right? Cause it kind of reminds me of, you know how people collect like coins and dollar bills that are flawed? Right, so those NFTs I actually really, I, I really like. But you know, again, dealing with a lot of artwork, there's always a huge QA process. Um, and then, obviously, launching a product or launching a project, depending on the following you have, you know, you're kind of going into it like, all right, this thing, this thing's gonna sell out. Is it gonna sell out? Like, are are we gonna sell out? Like, you know, and you have to kind of start like waging whether or not you're like. Okay, is success coming? Is it not coming? Like, I know uh, I have a handful of friends that are gonna mint this thing, but you know, like, actually getting a project out and then you know getting it to be successful um, is is always always a big challenge. Um, I think when it comes down to the technology on on my side and the art pipelines, it, everything kind of makes sense. It's not it's not too crazy. There's there's not not a ton of reinventing with the initial mint as much as there is um, trying to build utility afterwards. So I think, yeah, I think it's kind of the art 
is the first piece for me. The second piece for launching a product is just the expectation of, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, and then there's all the stuff afterwards, but I think from my side, that's kind of how I see the, the, the troubles. And then, you know, there's the whole community piece as well, which is a, a totally a, a five minute rant. <laughs> you know? I've got a question about community after this, so hold that thought. Thanks. I'll just chime in and say, uh, there's more surprises than not surprises. We're inventing stuff together. And uh, you know, if we were doing the same thing, there would be less surprises, but everything felt like a surprise. Like we didn't expect, um, one of the funniest ones is as a CCO project, anyone can do anything. So after we launched, we tried to do something with a partner and then someone else in the community built a better version of what we were doing with our partner faster. So we were basically front run by our community, <laughs> which is a lovely experience and not at all what I expected. So one of the biggest challenge of building a PFP project is that there are no playbooks. No one's gonna tell you what to do. No one's gonna share with you what type of team is needed. So it's really like build as you go and try to, it's, it's wild. We started with one artist thinking that it would be okay. Then we expanded to two, then ended up with five different artists. And then we started with one tech, turned into three techs. And by the end of this whole entire process, we had a team of 10 which I'm like, wow, like I was not expecting that at all. Um, so that is a big challenge along with security because as you build your community, there are tens of thousands of people in this community, specifically in, on Discord. And for someone that doesn't really know the technology nor the security protocols and whatnot, every night, I still remember, a week before we minted, I would wake up at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m., because of how scary it is of someone coming into our Discord and hacking us. And right after we minted, that was the only time I actually had a good sleep because of the scare, the, the, the fear of getting hacked. Um, that was a huge, huge challenge. Yeah. And of course, to Frankie's points with, are we gonna sell out? Are we not gonna sell out? Is this gonna be well received? And no one knows until the very end, until the very mint day. And of course, the crazy challenges after the fact, the mental health and stuff like that, which we'll talk about later on. <laughs> yeah, I think the general theme is like, uh, we, we all had to kind of skill up a lot in these last sort of 12 months uh, for my company as well. Web3 was the new addition to all the technical stuff we were doing. Um, there's a lot of responsibility uh, when you're taking, um, you know, when people are buying, investing in your project, um, community. Uh, I mean, when we did the, the drop, it was our first kind of drop. Um, it sold out very quickly and that caused an influx of all these transactions, which was basically crashing Tezos at the time, uh, which was super uh, frightening. Uh, we had, there was a lot of frustration because people's transactions weren't going through and this kind of thing and we had to quickly educate everyone how they could choose different nodes to do their transactions and stuff like this. Uh, and whilst we were also learning that at the same time, like we didn't know what was going to happen, we certainly didn't think that it was all going to happen so quickly. Um, and then you kind of get over that hurdle and it's a new one now. We're trying to build out the AR metaverse, we're building infrastructure to, to create the bridge between one technology to another. Um, everything is reliant on our community. We're relying on our um, community and good communication in there to, to create a um, beta testing network. Um, and we're always like thinking about how to balance the, the, the return on like any sort of involvement and participation, like doing some cool giveaways or some special, something special for the community for, for their input and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I was like trying to keep in mind, we're all building this thing together and like how can we make it worthwhile? That's a good point. And I'd like to touch on community now. Uh, when we talk about the best, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, what are some of the best and worst parts of community management? Ooh. Community. Uh, no, community is obviously, it's, it's the most important piece to all of this, um, I think. A lot, a lot of people, when they ask me when, you know, to advise them on creating a project, I'm like, you need to understand and or know or be part of a community, right? Like a lot of people, they have the expectation that I'm gonna launch this thing and based off of my social following, 
on you know because I I have I'm verified on Instagram. I'm gonna just automatically like be able to build a project, launch it, and yeah, you might have that success, but can you maintain? Right, you might have that initial bump, but like you know, you need to main, maintain growth, and so community is. I would say probably the most important piece aside from fire art, you know, and great, great execution. Um, some of the best things about the community, I think, is that the, the saying, if you build it, they will come, is actually really true in this space. Um, and you'll attract people that, that are, you'll have some, some people that are really, really awesome, and then you have some people that are just, like, angry, right? And I, this, there's a lot of that in this space. Like people, you know, we're dealing with money, right? That's essentially we're dealing with like financial assets. So anytime you're building something that's has an effect on people's, you know, income, right? It can generate a lot of like mixed feelings, like up and down. But I think the most amazing things from the community, I, for me, seeing people make fan art or derivatives of my art or even seeing some of the community members go off and build their own projects. I was like, whoa, that's mad inspiring. Like you guys, like I actually was able to teach people something that they could take away and build something from. Um, and so I think, yeah, I think the community as a whole, every time I'm in a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed out and I'm like, oh, I don't know if what I'm doing is the right thing. I go into the community and I just have a ton of love, right? And that from those people in that in in the discord and on twitter like seeing people hyped up and hearing people come up to me and say yo this was my first nft and it really made me smile i'm like that's pretty tight so i think it's 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 fun it's definitely out of all the industries i've worked in this one specifically with having nft communities is pretty dope thanks yeah just to echo what frankie is saying it is a lot. <laughs> you get so many different components to it. I think even the word community, like when you're doing something that's 10,000 assets-ish, like you're gonna have a lot of people with a lot of feelings in a lot of different ways. So if I think about some of the good highlights, um, Darth sitting here in the audience has become like a good friend of mine. And through that friendship before Cryptodes, after Cryptodes, uh, he has gone on and created like an entire character called like It's a Vibe. And it's like based on the fact that our community come up with this thing about vibing, which is like on the back of my hat here. Um, and if you went pound vibe in the Discord, we had this like fun animation that lots of people really had fun with. And because we, we didn't want to have a roadmap, we wanted it to be anyone could build anything. So Darth is one of these people here who's gone out in the world and created all sorts of cool assets in person and stickers on buildings everywhere. And that's inspiring to me, knowing that Web3 is about more creators. I think we're supposed to be in the creator track here. And I feel like our, our vision and our power that we can all have together is to make it so that 100% of people on the internet are creators. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be heard. So that's the good part. The bad part is entitlement. Community members get entitled. It's a common thing that happens over time. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Sometimes they come in, and there's just there's nothing you can really do or say to them to help them think differently. Like you said, it's about money. Although I actually think NFTs should not be as financialized as they are over time. I think that's where it's about art, culture, and non-plungibility. It's just kind of currently a lot about money, too. But yeah, that entitlement, I think, is uh, something that can be really challenging. And uh, is, if anyone has tips, I have some tricks I can share, too. <laughs> One trick I find is like uh, if you can try and create a relationship with somebody, you can kind of get beyond that entitlement sometimes. But it sometimes doesn't work, too. So I'm, I'm open to feedback afterwards on that. <laughs> Thanks. So before this whole NFT thing, I've been in business for the last 10 years. I never really got the word community. And even when I was uh, trading, I didn't get it. It was not until we formed our own little community of people actually that believe in the same thing, that are respectful, that loves wholesomeness, fun, um, that I truly feel like, oh, wow, this is what a community is. These guys are just chilling in there, chatting, enjoying themselves, and that itself is incredible. And they are there to support you on what you believe in. And I think ultimately what really draws a community together is having really clear values as a founder and communicating that to your audience, your community members. 
And the people that are meant to stick around, they will stick around. But then if it doesn't vibe, they'll move on to the next project. And it's great that there's so many different projects because there is something for everyone. But there's not, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna try to get <laughs> the other way of saying it. Um, so it's incredible, like these people are, are amazing. And uh, just yesterday we, hold, we, we held a meetup, impromptu meetup with less than 24 notice, 24 hour notice. 100 plus people showed up because they wanted to hang out. And that's the power of community. Now, the bad side, the ugly side of community is the fact that it is live feedback. Um, to echo on and add on to these things, like the live feedback re really hits the founders. People like us, we pour our hearts into a project. And when people come in not really understanding the values or follow along the whole entire journey, they come in and just slap on different comments and whatnot without understanding the ethos and everything. That itself is, is very tough to deal with. Um, emotionally, mentally, as a founder, I think uh, that, yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, it's a challenge of many managing expectations uh, with the community. So um, a, the, the whole space moves really fast. Like, and, and at the moment, there's just an explosion of hype and media. And every day, it's like there's a new innovation and, and things like this. And, and the, the community can, can start to feel like, oh, maybe we're falling behind, or maybe we're not producing or developing fast enough. And it requires a lot of transparency, a lot of updates, a lot of uh, communication, and, and show that you're making some progress. Um, I feel like, yeah, that's probably been the biggest challenge and, and this pressure. Uh, I know kind of like the time frames that I, me and my team usually work uh, towards, and I know that we're working a lot faster because of that community pressure. Um, so that's, yeah, that and then, you know, uh, like everybody else has said, you know, the, the conversations going on in the Discord and, you know, how you can just reassure folks and um, uh, just tell them to take it easy and <laughs> chill out and we'll get there. Um, and then, yeah, the good side, obviously, is uh, when you start to see the, the impact on the community. We've, um, we're, I'm doing a TED Talk next month, and we'll, we've collected all of these videos that the community members will uh, have been filming of themselves. And uh, we'll see behi behind me on the stage, there'll be three enormous screens, and suddenly you'll see all the community come to life on the screens. And it's been so funny, like, the the places that they've been filming themselves and suddenly they're becoming agents in their own kind of little crazy cyberpunk world. Uh, I think that's uh, really exciting. That's kind of the spirit of the, the metaverse future. Awesome. Uh, and I don't think we have enough time to take a question, but I'll just end this off with one last question for you guys. Um, we've got about five-ish minutes left, maybe a bit less. Uh, what is one piece of solid advice that you could give to anyone in the audience that's an NFT creator or that's looking to break into the Web3 space? A little piece of advice that I found that has helped me a ton is streaming in the Discord, doing AMAs, uh, just being really, really active, like, full time. Um, that I think all the interaction for, for me, I'm doxxed, so people know who, you know, what, who's behind Subducks, but all of that, like, live moment that I spend with the people that I'm connecting with and the friends that I'm making, it's critical. It's, it's so important, so that's what I would say. Um, I would point you over to Will here. Like, the authenticity he's displayed in this conversation is what I always tell people who come to me and ask me, what should I do as a creator? We're here inventing, we're here innovating. And so if you're just trying to do something that feels a little bit routine, you are not gonna be received the same way as like Will who's put his heart on the line here. You can see that in our conversation. Um, so that's one piece of advice is to be authentic. I think that's really important as we're inventing something together that we all put what we really feel out there and it resonates really deeply. That's what was kind of crazy about cryptos is we had no idea what the reception is gonna be. And we just put our values out there. Number two piece of feedback I would give is to, there's a lot of people who you're kind of forming a big relationship. These numbers can get really large. And so you really wanna figure out ways to vet people and you really wanna figure out ways to put things in place that might not sound Web3, but give you security in case things go wrong. Because a lot of these projects as they come out, it was all fun and games. And then later stuff happens that's not fun and games. And so set yourself up for success. 
by understanding the ethos of Web3, but still thinking about the risk and the other things about the rest of the world's figured out in some ways that we can maybe learn from them a little bit too. Will and Sutu, quick words of advice before we wrap up. For sure, um, be authentic, be you, because people connect with people. And uh, if you say bullshit, people call you out, they sense it, they can't connect. So put your values out, be clear, be authentic. Um, yeah, I would suggest getting a Twitter account, <laughs> getting on Twitter, talking to all the other artists, uh, support their work, build a community around the art and the artists that you meet. Uh, yeah, build a community around those artist works that you like. And that's a really great place to start. Just start connecting. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, being up here. And good luck to everyone that's working on an NFT project. Thank you. Thank you.